Well, on Hope 103.2, it is an absolute pleasure to have John Cooper from Skillet joining us ahead of your Australian tour. Welcome. Good to have you. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for uh, having me on. I mean, it has been a few years since Skillet have been to Australia, been to New Zealand. I recall many years ago seeing you guys at Parachute Festival, which is going way back. But uh, what has brought you back to our shores this time around? It is going way back. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> that was a long, long time ago. Yeah, it's been since 2018. I can't believe it's been five years. It just went so fast. It's crazy to me. Thrilled to be coming back. You know, um, with Spotify and all these streaming services, you can see exactly where your listeners are and uh we have a couple of cities in our top i think top five actually certainly top 10 that are from australia so a couple of years ago i was stunned i was stunned that uh to, to see that many people in australia i thought i can't believe it's been so long so i'm ready to come back we're gonna put on a rock and roll show and i hope people come out and have some fun and one of the, the uh, songs we're going to get to hear, of course, among many of your great hits, is going to be the new one, Psycho In My Head. I've just been watching the music video for that, which in and of <laughs> itself is just, it's a lot of fun. But the, the heart behind that song, I feel like it's one that's going to resonate with a lot of people who kind of feel that disconnection between what's happening inside our own minds and then the kind of lives that we're living on the outside. What inspired you to write a, a song that included that kind of message in there? You know, music is one of those things that can have so many different levels to what a song can mean. And even in a spiritual context, you can have a very broad meaning and, and you, you splice down. I mean, I think that the song has done well for us for lots of reasons. One is that whether people are religious or not religious or no matter where they are or where they are on the planet, everybody can relate to feeling a little crazy since 2020 i mean the whole world everything went nuts and so people are very much kind of looking for stability and they're feeling very vulnerable and so psycho in my head i think probably has touched on a nerve with a lot of people that are like yeah i feel like i'm losing my mind mm -hmm. i think for for people that that like the bible um you know like like we do we recognize that there is this this um this war happening between the flesh and the spirit and we recognize that even when <laughs> even when we are you know in christ we are a new creation and i'm walking in the spirit you know it doesn't take that much to to it doesn't take that much to happen in your life maybe you're tired maybe you're hungry maybe you're stressed out maybe your your little kids are screaming in the car <laughs> and it doesn't take that much for you to find out man you, you still have a lot of sanctification that needs to happen there's this person this old man that sometimes wants to rise up back up in your life and um you know we call as the bible calls that the flesh or the old man there's lots of different ways that the bible talks about it but it's basically saying this those are the deeds of the flesh. That is your old life. That's the that's the old person that you need to continually put to death. Sometimes in theology, they call it to mortify. You mortify that thing. Put him to death. <laughs> He's, he, an old man needs to die. That's mm. what Psycho in My Head is about. And I think it definitely is going to be, you know, resonating with a lot of people. But as you bring up just how much change, how much flux I feel like we've experienced in the last few years, there's almost in, in many of the conversations I'm having with people, there's kind of an exhaustion that some people feel with the amount of like big ticket issues that we have to wrestle with. You know, we've got what's going on in our own lives, but then you've got the stress of a pandemic. You've got these kind of social, cultural conversations happening. We've got wars going on. Like there is so much happening in our world. How have you found your own sense of peace, I suppose, and that stability that you've mentioned when so much just seems like it's chaotic at the moment? Yeah, I think you just said that really well um, because there's a lot of different things, but I wouldn't mind commenting on it. But the first thing is this, I found that peace and that stability in the Bible, in, in the Word of God, because as everything else is changing rapidly, I don't think that we're exaggerating. I've asked, asked my grandmother, my grandmother is still alive. She's 96, all right? Wow. So, you know, she got married. Her husband went straight to World War, you know, World War II. I mean, straight overseas, you know, so... Mm -hmm. You're talking about people that have lived a really long time. And I've asked her since 2020, I started asking her, I feel like all the time, am I crazy or is this the weirdest time ever? <laughs> you know, the the the, the rapid change of, of pace, you know, or pace of change, excuse me. I think because of that, it drove me deeper and deeper into wanting to say, okay, what is the one thing in my life 
I know will never, ever change. What is the one thing in my life that says no matter how fast all this change, no matter what technology happens, no matter what new war occurs, no matter what new social justice initiative takes place, no matter what some crazy person says on my internet feed, what's the one thing I know is not going to change? And that's the word of God. The, the Bible says the flowers fade, the grass withers, but the word of our Lord stands forever. That is so comforting. And I, I mean, I, I've always believed that since I was a kid, but I never believed it like I believe it since 2020. It is such mm -hmm. a comfort to know if I build my life upon this rock, I'm not going to be shaken in the 2020s. And so that has meant a great deal to me. It seems in some ways as well, in the, the lifespan of Skillet as a band up until now, I remember like there would be, as a, as a rock band and with the kind of style and genre that you guys have, there's people that would kind of be like, whoa, this is, this is really edgy, this is really kind of pushing tradition, all of this kind of, you know, fun stuff in some respects. Now it's almost like there's a, there's a shift that's happened, if I'm articulating this well, where it's like you guys as a band and yourself, John, you've almost become a kind of um, like a guidepost for stability for, I hesitate to use the word like tradition in a negative sense, but it's like the kind of rock and roll band that some would say, hey, you know, don't listen to that. That's kind of edgy and out there. It's now like you guys are a representation to people of uh, sort of traditional values and kind of keeping your head above water a little bit. Like, do you feel that transition yourself a little bit? <laughs> yeah, uh, no one has actually articulated that nearly as well as you. And that's that's a big <laughs> statement. So because I, I've done about five billion interviews. OK, <laughs> nobody's articulated that that well. And I, and I do realize I get the irony, it's actually hysterical because we look progressive. Our music sounds progressive. The traditional, uh, not not the traditional people, but some traditional people have even take issue with Skillet because of the music. There's no way that could be Christian. And then here we are espousing such traditional biblical theology. <laughs> um, to me, I'm like, yeah, I don't think we've really ever changed that I know of, you know? And so, um, it is unusual, and I recognize the irony of, of the situation. But for me, I always thought that this is what we were all doing. I thought this was what, what all Christian music was doing. We were all here because if we wanted to be progressive, we would just be in the secular music world. We would just be doing secular music. We wouldn't care about this Christian music thing. Um, and, and of course, I do recognize now <clears throat> Skillet is known as a secular rock band, of course, but that took a long time before that that kind of crossover actually happened. So for me, um, I think we're not just we're not just a guidepost for traditional values, but also for traditional. How do I want to say this? Traditional culture. Like I'm, I'm a very big proponent for Western civilization. Um, I'm just looking at people like, are you serious? You hate Western civilization. Western civilization is why there is freedom of speech and, 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 and freedom of religion and freedom of association. So you can go to church and preach the gospel without intrusion from the state. Are you serious? You don't like that? It's crazy to me. Um, so we definitely are kind of outspoken about those things because I think they're good for everybody. The Christian, the non-Christian, the atheist, they're good for everybody to say you're opinion matters, your individual liberty matters, it's good for the proclamation of the gospel as well. Is it strange to you that as a band, as a musician, that's almost become, I wouldn't say a new part of what you do, of course, but the fact that as, as a band you're representing those values and kind of declaring them in some respect, is it strange that as artists you're doing that as opposed to, you know, a politician or some kind of uh, commentator in that kind of arena? Yeah, it is. And the truth is, is that I didn't really want to do it. I was more like, hey, I want to kind of stay a little bit apolitical if I can. Now, not to get too deep in the weeds here, but <laughs> in my view, standing up for freedom of speech. Now, now you got to understand, obviously, I'm talking about American politics. I don't know anything about <laughs> Australia. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's I'm not, fine. I'm not American politics. Standing up for freedom of speech up until recently was not viewed as a political thing that was viewed as a philosophical thing um whether you're on the right or the left freedom of speech in fact funny enough it used to be the left in america that fought more for freedom of speech than the right and that that's kind of flipped i guess but the point is is that 
that really wasn't what I wanted to do. I just felt that I had a responsibility. We had gotten to a place where life had gotten so absolutely bananas. And we saw so many Christians saying such crazy stuff, um, going apostate, deconstructing. Um, and I know that's a word that uh, maybe I won't use the word deconstructing. Maybe I'll say deconverting, deconverting, leaving the faith, going so progressive as to say things that really don't sound they're not actually Christian principles anymore, even though they've kept some of the language. And I just kind of felt I just got to use the platform I have for the Lord. I think it's the best way that I can that I can do it, because I do believe we're on the verge of some really some really terrible things for, for Western civilization that really will affect not just Christians. It's going to affect everybody. And this, this is the, this is the kicker It's because I've been preaching for 20 years, standing up for justice really is part of the call of the, of the Christian. And now I think that my interpretation of that is obviously a lot of different than a lot of social justice folks these days, but I've always praised like the abolitionist movements in America who spoke out against slavery in the 1800s. This was started by Christians. They were Quakers, uh, the abolitionist movement, and they believed it was a, this is what God has said for us to do. We are supposed to speak out for those who cannot speak for themselves. That's a Christian principle. And so I've been praising that principle ever since my band started in the 90s. <clears throat> and I just hit me. I was like, all right, I've been saying that. And here we are. I think we got to speak up for justice. And it's probably going to co cost you something, but we're going mm. for it. And uh, I'm just so thankful to be able to make a stand for Christ, to stand up for the word of God, the authority of scripture, that Jesus Christ is the only way, the only truth, the only life. I love that. And uh, my whole band is on board with that, and I'm really blessed for it. And somehow it's quite remarkable when you think of Jesus, not only as someone who many, of course, believe to be the son of God, but then who others will just simply admire as a very loving, very kind, very inspiring kind of person. For him to have remained in so many respects, sort of untainted by cultural changes, you know, he's, he's been able to be continuously admired for the love and compassion that he showed people, despite what's changed around him. And yet there are people that will question and, and wrestle with faith. Like, why? Why do you think when he is such a uh, a great example, to put it simply, of hope and of love and compassion, that some people still wrestle with whether or not they can believe in him or not? Oh, man, that's a long question we, we could unpack for a long time. I mean, certainly you're, you're going to have people that just <clears throat> do not believe that he is who he says he was, um, which is the Messiah, the Christ. He is the Savior of the world. He is the Son of God. People are going to wrestle with that from either a philosophical standpoint or because they they, you know, they just don't have faith for that. That's just the way it is. They, I, just don't, I just don't believe that <clears throat> as a proposition. I think that one of the things happening in Western culture right now, and again, I really can't speak intelligently about Australia because I just don't know. In America, uh, and this has certainly happened in Europe, I've spent a lot of time in Europe, so I, I know that to be similar there. It's the redefinition of what truth actually is. And I think that that's why the church is so very confused right now about who Jesus is and is sort of... Um, trying to rebrand because they, they're not really understanding the times very well, in my opinion, which again is why I'm so loud about traditional um, Christian theology, because the world is rebranding what truth is. It's a very postmodern idea of truth, that truth is not fixed, truth is not absolute, truth is, is basically your personal view of reality. That's why they say things like, I got to speak my truth. They mean my, it's a very personal thing that I came to knowledge on. As that's being changed, so are the definitions of terms like compassion. Jesus was compassionate. Well, what does that really mean? Jesus was loving. Well, what does that really mean? Everybody wanted to be around Jesus. Well, maybe it depends on <laughs> a whole lot of other things that so Jesus has kind of become a caricature in a lot of ways. So <clears throat> I think that as we preach the whole counsel of God and we understand the times, which we have to do, we have to understand the times. What we find out is if, if we don't preach who Jesus really was in, in, in the entirety of scripture, we're not actually helping people. And so in a world that's gone mad, in a world of confusion, as you said, where we're all feeling a little psycho in my head right now, feeling a little bit crazy, Jesus brings stability and he brings answers to this. And he says, no, 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 don't let people confuse you. You don't have your own version of truth. 
you you don't have your own version of morality. There is uh, a fixed understanding of what is wicked and what is righteous, what is good and what is evil. And if you if you read the Bible, you begin to understand that. And I just I love that about the Bible. Well, John, we've loved being able to uh, to hear from you today. So appreciate that you guys are going to take the time to come to Australia, come to New Zealand as well, I note. So, John, again, thank you so much for your time. Really looking forward to it. It's great to be with you. Thank you so much. 